Hi guys, Mr. Jaeger here, and welcome to Wargame Red Dragon, though not the vanilla Wargame Red Dragon. You see, since playing Warno, I have been kind of wanting to get a bit of an itch, and unfortunately, due to Warno not being quite developed at the point where I can play uh, more PvE-related stuff, uh, I've been kind of wanting to play something similar to it, so Wargame Red Dragon kind of fulfills the need. However, I've been playing with a bit of a different mod, uh, which kind of scratches that itch, but also in an enjoyable manner. Um, because obviously Wargame Red Dragon does have its fair share of mods. Um, we've got the Ash and Shadows mod, which takes uh, more modern uh, air uh, modern vehicles, modern stuff, and puts them to the front line. Uh, the same with Annihilation. I think that one's a bit more realistic, or, yeah, more realistic in that regard. But I'm playing a mod that doesn't actually go with the, you know, realism or the uh, more advanced kit, but in fact kind of refreshes the game, refreshes it a bit, uh, and kind of reimagines uh, a sort of a combination, which is, of course, in the name, War Game Airland Dragon. <laughs> My brain was really struggling to try and remember the name. But no, so the mod War Game Air Airland Dragon, uh, we're just going to call it Airland Dragon for now, seeks to try and combine the best things from Airland Battle and the red dragon and puts them together whilst also ensuring believability more than realism but also gameplay above everything else i mean to quote the mod this was designed primarily with co-op coop ve in mind and considerations towards the campaign focusing on believability as opposed to realism gameplay takes priority though it should still feel authentic now for me this is a big plus because i'm not much of a pvp -er, as you could no doubt tell um i kind of enjoy my little old comp stomping stuff and the ability to have more mods to, you know, cater to that need, I'm a big fan of. And uh, I'll obviously put this down in the link below uh, to if you guys are also intrigued at this. So what exactly makes this mod special? Well, I'll give you a few of the highlights, but there are a fair amount of highlights. Um, apart from multiple uh, new vehicles and new options for you in terms of tactics, we also have... Direct fire capability added to most howitzers and turreted mortars. Pretty good. Uh, new icons to easily distinguish radar weapons, a bit of a big plus in my opinion. Um, all decks now require a nation, national coalition slash, uh, national slash co nas bleh, national slash coalition, sorry my brain's being fucked today, and, and specialization, no general decks. Um, Anti-aircraft guns fire in burst lengths, uh, manpad rebalance, command unit repricing, uh, tracked and wheeled vehicles speeds reduced on roads uh, with wheeled vehicles reduced to 130 kilometers. Uh, fuel autonomy is replaced with mean between time and maintenance, which apparently doubles the autonomy, and a whole bunch of other useful, awesome bits. So, I thought we'd have a bit of a crack at uh, this particular game with this mod. I've had a tiny bit of practice on the South uh, Korea Busan Pocket campaign, but we're going to be playing this particular campaign to start with. And if you guys like what I'm doing, feel free to put in the comment section down below, and I will continue to go down the list, and eventually we'll hit the Second Korean War, which will be in 92, the hardest of the entire campaigns. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a, I've been practicing a little bit with uh, the Busan Pocket, just sort of getting a feel for the character, a uh, feel for the sh uh, controls and everything else like that, and I'm enjoying it. I'm I really am um, finding it rather fun to play this game a little bit more intensely than I perhaps previously did. So, without further ado, let's get started. Launch the Busan Pocket. Nineteen eighty seven, the Busan Pocket. June tenth, nineteen eighty seven. South Korean dictator Chung Do Wan, having reached the end of his official presidential mandate and willing to step down, announces his choice for a successor. This appointment, which oversteps any electoral process, triggers the wrath of the students and the liberals, who were hoping for democratic reforms. June 10th to the 18th, 1987. In a matter of days, over a million protesters take to the streets all over the country. U.S. forces in Korea are ordered to remain on lockdown in their barracks. North Korea does not fail to notice the situation in the South. Agents infiltrate designated circles in order to increase the level of chaos, while military forces are put on alert. June 19, 1987. While police and security forces are about to be overwhelmed, 
President Chun mobilizes the army in the streets. Hard pressed and panicked by a hostile crowd, an officer orders his troops to fire. In a matter of minutes, the shooting spreads all over the streets of Seoul. June 19th to the 21st, 1987. The crackdown is brutal, resulting in over a thousand casualties and many more arrests. June 21st, 1987. With U.S. troops still confined to their barracks and the ROK army deployed in the streets, North Korean leader Kim Il-sung decides the time has come for Korea's reunification. June 22, 1987. When the North Korean artillery barrage rolls over the DMZ at dawn, U.S. and ROK units, disorganized by the civil unrest, are taken by complete surprise. June 22 to the 27th, 1987. Within a few hours, the first lines of defense are overwhelmed. Within a few days, the battered U.S. and ROK units are pushed back to a last perimeter around the vital harbor of Busan. Major, I am sorry, but I cannot get through to the general headquarters. All communication, communications with the front are cut off. Ah, uh, yes, wait, I think I've managed to reach an advanced post of the 3rd Infantry Battalion. I'll put you through now. This is Sergeant June from the 3rd Infantry Regiment. They totally thrashed us. They're coming straight at you. They're not even starving to take prisoners. At least one dominant and two infantry regiments supported by more artillery than imaginable. Our HQ is blown up and we have one left hand. So Communication breakdown, Major. We'll try and get through to other headquarters and to the U.S. General Headquarters in the region. In the meantime, I'm giving you reports of enemy troop movements. We'll Roger that. Wait for the thing to end so we can get the computer's turn. And... Boom. Major, I managed to contact the American headquarters. We should be getting information on their objectives shortly. In the meantime, here is the situation. Busan must not fall before the reinforcements arrive, which is in three days' time. According to their promise, we are holding our three particular sectors surrounding us. We have a few airborne and inevitable. Yes. So, this is the po Busan Pocket 1987. So, the general intention with this particular t campaign is it's kind of a tutorial campaign. It's actually one of the easiest, figure quote, uh, campaign in the game. But this game is far from easy. Uh, at least if you're not prepared. <laughs> so we have three positions we need to defend from, and we've got limited resources in which to defend it. So I'm going to try and see if we can set ourselves properly up. So in these three sectors, uh, I'm going to butcher the names of all these territories, and I am so sorry in advance. Degeu, Uichang, and Yongdeok. So in Yongdeok, we're going to have a bit of a hell of a time with a th with the 12th tank regiment, because they've got Chonmahos and they've got Chonho Mark IIs, which are terrifying because they have anti-air missiles. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to attach the co close recon convoy to those dudes. Um, I'm going to attach... Let's see. I'm going to attach the logistics division to <clears throat> to Degeu. I'm also going to attach Heavy Armoured Battalion to Degeu because they're only going to be encountering lightly armoured stuff, which is fine. Um, I'm going to place the Fighter Squadron over in Yongdeok because the SU-25Ks that they've got will do a lot of damage to my tanks. We need that shit. Uh, strike Squad, we're going to put in Uichang because we need some form of air cover and while the FE Tiger 2s are not the best they do have rockets and they can do some stunning damage if we are attacked so it's important um, Peace Pheasants I'm going to put the Peace Pheasants over on this side to support against uh, the Strike Squad because when the tanks show up I can call those uh, F Phantoms in they'll nuke them and be able to duke that out I'm probably going to put the Special Aviation in Yongdeok. Yeah, because then they can neutralize the tanks, and then we can deal with that. I will be deploying an additional Air Force in the form of a 105 Strike Squad, which does take our, does take out 15 command points, which is not great. Um, but the good news is that 
But these things, these guys are absolutely incredible, and I love them to pieces. These guys are amazing because they have the 18 227 gram Mark 82s. It's they, no, they are amazing. They are seriously the lifesaver of this entire game. Right. Um, speaking of which, anti tank. Mm, I'm probably going to call in Artillery Company and Anti-Air Convoy. So I'm going to deploy Anti-Air to this region as well as Artillery. Oh no, no, I should probably think about redeploying them there. Do we have enough supplies for that? There's only three in three. We've got Sterlars, T-55, a lot of T-55s. And I've only got that. This will probably be the toughest battle. Unless... I can't redeploy them. No, I'd say probably deploying them there might be more useful. <clears throat> Deggy is going to be probably the big one we're going to have to try and deal with, and then everything else kind of otherwise pushes on. So, It Chang is definitely going to be the more difficult of the two to defend against, because the, obviously, T-55 spam. Uh, but we can do what we can to hold the line as best as we can. We do have anti-tank means, though, so I think it's not totally terrible. Right, let's make a save. As you can see, I have attempted trainings. Uh... Right, let's make the save. Okay. So, try and see what we can do. I think we're in a solid, semi-solid position. The first few, the first turn is definitely going to be the most difficult. Um, especially, right, what we got? Okay, Deggy is the first one. So, we are... Ooh, our morale is not good and our destruction requirement points, not that, not that high. It is not that much to kill us. Um... Especially with our heavily armored battalion, our just logistics company. Uh, right, we need to defend against Busan, Yongdeok. Okay, we've not got a huge amount of points to deployment wise with 1250, but. And it's from Cohesion 5. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so we're moving the FOB to the far side, because what I'm going to try and do, um, I'll deploy the tank HQ to hmm, probably place the tank HQ here. Actually, no, further away. And then the M113 here. And then 105. Yeah, and then the Bongbu. No, the Hardened will go here. Right. So then we deploy... <clears throat> yeah. Try and deploy as best as we can. Uh, deploy one tank here. And another tank here. And these guys will hold the left flank. They're not going to do it too much, unfortunately, but that's all we can really spare. We'll keep one of those dudes in reserve. Um, I want to use... I'm going to try and deploy these guys behind the building so that they can kind of ambush as best as they can do, really. So, two dudes over there. Three. Um, I want to put... One reconnaissance. There's not a lot of reconnaissance, sadly, in this particular endeavor, which is rather sad. Um, what vehicles do we have? <laughs> Only the napalmers, of course. <laughs> we'll try and put one of those in there. Not that they can do much. We're going to have uh, one piece spectator on standby, just so we can immediately take advantage of something. Um... Everything's so expensive. Um, I'm going to deploy a couple of anti... Uh, I'm going to deploy... 
Mm. Yeah, a couple of dudes in in this forest to provide cover because what we're going to eventually do is I need to probably deploy a couple of the AR2 tanks to or the artillery. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll deploy two artillery pieces from here, and they're basically going to provide support wherever they can. Um. I kind of want to put a recon here in preparation so that they can kind of spot more targets as they go along this road. But I don't know if the visual range is going to be good. I'm thinking probably there. So if we put that there and we tell them to fast move. Uh, and then the rest is probably just going to be a bunch of infantry. So we're going to deploy some of these dudes along the line. So we don't, like, lose out. Um, we'll deploy a couple of stingers. Though, to be fair, more in defensive positions here. And... Um, no, it's too close. We'll deploy another one over here. I think we can't spawn the stinger. No, we don't have enough points. Right, we'll spend the last two... Yeah, spend the last two 15 packs. Uh, just getting ourselves set up over here. Cool. Okay. And let's go. Pause. Actually have it very slow. A uh, bullet time. Uh yeah, bullet time. Right, you actually no wait, hang on. Pause. You move fast and I want you to move to this location. You, 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 you. Unload. Pause. And get your asses over there as soon as you possibly can. Uh, you boys, unload. You, all of you, unload. And then move your asses over to here. And you, unload. Right, normal. Move your asses over there. Right. Now that should mean that you boys are all going to be kind of in a somewhat decent location. Get your fucking asses over there. You, if memory serves correctly, we'll probably need to target like over here. So your artillery positions will be doing what we can. You guys are rushing over to there. You guys need to turn your engines off. Stingers, fine over there. That's fine over there. That's fine over there. Right, we've got more help. More stuff, so I'm going to call in an additional piece. And then some more infantry. Uh, I'm probably going to move these guys over to here. So the intention with this is to try and provide as much security. Bingo. Right, this will be a good opportunity if I can nuke him. Come on, come on, come on. Drop. Get the fuck out of dodge. Ooh. Oh, just fucking missed. Right, get the fuck out of dodge. A little bit preemptive, but if we get this kill... Fucker, we were so close. So goddamn close. Targeting those guys a bit too much. Right, corrected shot. You boys make your way over to there. Alert. KM132 destroyed. What the fuck did I just... Oh, they... Yeah, okay. I kind of expected that, to be honest with you. Uh... Right, we're going to move one of the bong boos over to here now. Just so we can rapidly deploy. Get the air power in. Oh, 
Oh, that's dick move. How did you survive? I'm impressed. No, genuinely, I am definitely impressed. Right, you drop. You drop. And proceed to loop this area, if you please. Nice. If you would like to relocate, that would be great. Oh, fuck a duck. Don't shoot. Actually shoot, yeah. Sh shoot the fucker. Both shoot him. He's stunned. He's about to go bye bye And that's a command unit going down. That's a hundred points. Right. Okay, now that I've got the big scary shit done, we can kind of begin to chill a bit. Right. And now we can deploy a couple of tanks to provide support. These things are not cheap, but that's fine. We're also going to call some more air power in. Oh, fuck a duck. Right. On the one hand, I really wish I could call in... Oh, I can. Kind of. Unfortunately, not quite to the same degree. Artillery group. I'm going to call you Erste Gruppe. Target them. Get back over to there. Air power. I need you to fuck over that position. They're gone. Not entirely surprising. So the main intention with this entire thing is that I'm basically just trying to force the enemy into choke points and then use my air power and artillery power, like mass firepower, to destroy them as much as possible. So while I am throwing a f uh, while I am throwing these things to the walls, oh, they fucking spotted him! I didn't spot him until just that point. I'm gonna lose command unit. Oh, fuck you. Yep, they got one of my command units. Well, shit. Right. Note to self, murderize these wankers as much as humanly possible. Speaking of which, uh, two of these support trucks will go here. Tanks, assault this position and make those bastards pay for that command unit. It's really fucking irritating. Luckily for us, the AI likes to group them, uh, group themselves up a bit, which means we can take advantage of this. Oh yeah, that was my M1A1. That's fine. Right, I'm gonna go say hello to their fucking um, A, their artillery positions, because I think I'm about done with that. Okay. Nice! I'm so glad I went for that. Old position. Unfortunately, I can't really do a huge amount. Ugh. The one thing I hate about this AI sometimes. Right, you dropped, good. I can't spend any more time than I can. Right, artillery and Kyopyang go absolute mental on them. Uh, 
right. You go over to there. You keep firing over there. Ah, uh, that's a lot of missiles. And we just lost one of our fucking things. Right, withdraw. No, withdraw that way. Withdraw that way. So, we've definitely taken our fair share of casualties, and unfortunately the bastards are coming up from the rear as well, which is helpful. But this is where we get our two tanks in to come in from the back. We've been fucking over a large portion of enemy forces in the area, at least. Right, pop that fucker with the missiles you've got. One of you get some kills. Okay, dodge around, dodge around, dodge around. Oh, you saw him coming, bitch. Let them take over a little bit, but we need to nook that location. Once you can... Drop. The fuck out of dodge. Nice, we killed him. Hopefully these bombs should... Ah, not quite. Sadly, but, you know. Right, artillery. That's the group up. Fire fight. Missile launchers. At least hopefully we can neutralize enough of their... Hopefully we can neutralize enough of the transports. Sadly, we can't really tell the difference. We can't really tell who's got what. In terms of, like, what transports was whose, or what vehicle was whose, and all that jazz. So, a general... Yeah. Get the fuck out. Right, go this way. Fuck you and your stupid fucking spam a lot. Stupid. Be clear. Right, peace spectator, come this way. Or not. Okay, it's just vehicles. Just car yeah, just cargo vehicles. Right. Oh, hello, that's a beautiful target if I ever saw one. You spam me with napalm, I spam you with cluster bombs. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we have won, though unfortunately we did sustain some pretty nasty losses as well. Uh, yeah, the biggest ones I would say is the Peace Spectator, those are not cheap, as well as the K1. Rest, are, oh yeah, and also our, you know, fucking HQ, which really fucking irritated me. Uh, but the good news is that we were able to completely destroy their anti-tank forces, which I am not going to lie, I am very happy to see. Um, we've neutralized six of their artillery pieces, I am very happy to report. None of their shilkas, sadly, but we did neutralize all of their ZU-57s, nice. Uh, a lot of their recon infantry, good. A few of their 120, yeah, so, yeah, be, yeah, and two of their command vehicles. So you know what? Not bad, not great, but not bad. Bravo is unfortunately un is now an uncontested territory, which means if the enemy do move in, there's a chance they may grab onto Bravo early. Um, but that's something we could potentially fix in future missions. <clears throat> so now we have the freedom to choose which. Uh, well, we now have the freedom to choose which you know thing we want, as well as be able to send necessary reinforcements. I am kind of tempted to uh, send something. I think this one's just like what strike squad? Oh, napalm for stuff. To be fair, napalm is a nice thing, but I'm gonna kind of hold off. Let's if I go to here, anti tank. I mean, having the tow weapons in an area where there might be more tow related stuff. Actually, to be fair, we do have the toes in here. Oh, that would be so handy, especially if we had these. And these. Oh my God, this would probably be my lifesaver. In an instant, without a shadow of a doubt. But we don't have the points, sadly, so we're going to have to hold back. Though we do have the means to do stuff. Um, <clears throat> we've yet to do this battle. 
Um, Peace Bridge, I definitely feel we do need to have that located there. Um, I'll redeploy the spectators over to here to help defend this territory, territory as well as defend this. Because I feel... Or should we have this? You, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> it's really difficult. Uh, no, we'll go here. We'll go here. We'll, okay, no. You, go here. Can we maneuver more stuff? Oh, we can. <laughs> that moment, I'm like, hmm. Um, I'm going to say you. Oh, no. Uh, you. Uh... Yeah, we'll increase the cohesion to improve our supplies. You will also increase cohesion. Like, all the units that are here, we'll try and give R&R &R so we can get more points to deploy in the next battle. Uh, one could hope. So, R&R. R&R. &R, so we get the cohesion bonus. So that should mean that those guys are all set to go. Um, can we go? No, we can't R&R &R in the battle. That would have been, been kind of broken. Um... Peace Pheasants, I'm going to have you boys take over to here, because obviously we need to neutralize the enemy tanks as soon as possible. Right, so I'm going to probably call this particular episode, because um, I think like half an hour to like, I, I kind of want to make maybe each battle maybe, or depending on the length of the battle. So I'm going to leave it here so that the video is relatively short. So if you like this kind of content, let me know in the comment section down below, clicking on the like button. If you guys have any constructive criticism, uh, that would be awesome. I am not the best at this game, as you can no doubt tell. Microwing, in certain regards, is not my forte. Um, but I'm trying to play this game in the bid to try and learn more mobile aggressive tactics. Because in a lot of the games I play, I tend to play, uh, turtle up a little bit. And I, when it comes to a defensive position, in some regards, I'm much better suited for that. Whereas in this game, it's kind of like you need to constantly be moving. So I like the challenge of trying to do this thing. So if you like this kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section down below, clicking on the like button, and of course, subscribing to the channel for more. And I'll catch you in the next episode. This is Mr. Yeager, signing out.